Today we are going to start new series of lectures about hypertension caused by combinations of volume loading and vasoconstriction. So we will be focusing on the types of hypertension in which there are two components combinations of volume and vasoconstriction. Previously we discussed a different types of hypertension uh, in which angiotensin was involved. Now we will focus on combinations of volume loading and vasoconstriction. Now the first topic uh, of the, these series of lectures is the coarctation of the aorta. Coarctation of aorta. What is coarctation of aorta? Coarctation of aorta is simply narrowing of the aorta. It is narrowing of the aorta or there are two arcs. We know that there is an arch or arc in the aorta when it arises from the heart and when there is narrowing there are like two arc. One is this one and the another is this one. This is sim simply due to narrowing of the aorta. Now uh, what is aorta? Aorta is the largest blood vessel or the largest artery which takes the blood from the left ventricle. It takes the blood from the left ventricles and it supplies the blood to whole of the body. So initially we know that the uh, uh, deoxygenated blood comes to the right atrium then it goes into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle it goes into the lungs and from the lungs the oxygenated blood comes into the right atrium from the uh, left um, left atrium from the left atrium it goes into the left ventricle and from the left ventricle the blood goes through the aorta through the aorta in whole of the body it supplies blood to all organs of the human body now there are some blood vessels which will arise from the part of the aorta from the arch of the aorta before this coarctation before the point where narrowing or constriction of the aorta is occurring now the question is why this aorta coarctation why this coarctation of the aorta occurs there are a lot of reasons congenital uh, reasons are there like some of the um, congenital anomalies like turner syndrome or so, some other congenital uh, problems there are a lot of problems due to which this narrowing will occur we are not going to discuss this that what are the reasons of coarctation of aorta how we are going to diagnose the coarctation of aorta and what are the findings the clinical findings of um, in clinic uh, coarctation of aorta we are just focusing on different uh, types of hypertensions that we will basically discuss from physiology point of view and uh, coarctation of aorta is one of them so narrowing of the uh, aorta occurs uh, just after the arch of the aorta and it can be due to any reason now when this occurs when this narrowing of the uh, aorta occurs blood supply beyond this point blood supply beyond this point decreases blood supply beyond this point decreases some amount of blood small amount of blood is able to pass beyond this constriction but uh, it is very difficult for the blood to go beyond this constriction so what happens that the arterial pressure arterial pressure after this point arterial pressure after this point falls and the blood vessels the blood vessels which normally supply the head neck and the upper extremities or the arms those vessels which arise before this point they are arising from the arch of the aorta before this uh, constriction point arterial pressure or blood pressure in these uh, vessels that are present before this point it will be increased it will be high and it will be around 40 to 50 mm of mercury more than arterial pressure in the lower extremities it will be around 40 to 50 millimeter of mercury more than 
arterial pressure in the uh, blood vessels beyond or the blood vessels that are occurring after the um, the point at which the constriction has occurred at the point at which coarctation of the aorta has occurred now is the arterial pressure after this point has decreased the blood supply the blood supply to the kidneys also decreases of course blood supply beyond this point has decreased as a whole but as we know we are discussing the role of kidney role of kidney in long term regulation of arterial pressure therefore we specifically focus on the uh, blood supply to the kidneys now this blood supply uh, this decreased blood supply to the kidneys it is uh, similar to single kidney single or one kidney gall blood hypertension the high the, the phenomena or the consequences that will occur due to this problem will be just like that occurred in single or one kidney gall blood hypertension and what is one kidney or single kidney gall blood hypertension and it is just a removal of one kidney and then constricting the blood supply of one kidney so the same thing occurs here it is just like the the blood supply has been constricted at this point rather than this point and this is something which we have discussed discussed in detail in our previous lectures now when the blood supply to the kidneys both of the kidneys decreases and the consequences are like single or one kidney gall blood hypertension due to decreased blood supply due to decreased blood supply there is increased release of renin there is decreased release of renin and when renin is secreted more renin basically converts angiotensinogen into angiotensin it is converting a lot of angiotensinogen into angiotensin and we have discussed again and again and again that angiotensin basically it is causing vasoconstriction vessel constriction and it is also causing volume or load or it will cause uh, retention of the salt and water because due to decreased blood supply to both the kidneys there will be a lot of secretion of the renin into the blood and renin will convert a lot of angiotensinogen into angiotensin angiotensin will not only cause vessel constriction but it will also lead to direct stimulation of the kidney and will also secrete aldosterone both of which will cause retention of salt and water which will basically cause volume loading now due to both of these factors the vasoconstriction and the volume loading hypertension will occur blood pressure will increase now the blood pressure will increase when the blood pressure increase the blood supply at this point will also increase the blood flow in this point will also increase and it will increase so much that there is no ischemia in this kidneys and there is no ischemia in the kidneys or there is normal supply of blood to the kidneys and the increased secretion of renin stops and the, the secretion of renin returns to normal level the secretion of renin should return to normal now because the angiotensin has uh because a lot of angiotensin has been formed due to uh, renin and which is basically increasing the arterial pressure it will cause more increase in the arterial pressure in the point beyond this constriction it will cause more increase in the blood vessels beyond this point as compared to the increase in this point because the arterial pressure in this part will increase so much it will increase so much that sufficient amount of blood is available for the normal blood flow of kidney so that there is normal formation of urine it will the art the blood pressure in this part these parts beyond this constriction will be more than this part because of this constriction it is because it will 
it will keep on increasing the arterial pressure in this region will keep on increasing so much so that the blood flow to the kidneys return to the normal the point at which the blood flow to the kidneys return to the normal the point at which the blood flow to the kidneys return to the normal and the urine output returns to the normal at that point there will be no further increase in the arterial pressure in these points so in whenever there is coarctation of the aorta the arterial pressure in the upper extremities in the arms will be more around 40 to 50 mm of mercury more than the blood vessels that are present after the constriction point after the point at which there is a coarctation so this is this is just a similar to the single kidney goblet hypertension in which the hypertension or the arterial pressure increases so much so that the the uh, the blood flow the blood flow can increase so much that it can pass the constriction point and the the blood flow to the kidneys should return to the normal so the higher pressure in this region basically it is for the purpose to L, to to push sufficient blood to supply normal uh, blood flow to the kidneys so that's all about the uh, coarctation of the aorta which is basically a cause of hypertension in which there is combination of vasoconstriction and volume loading both of which are because there is constriction uh, not sufficient blood is coming to the kidneys due to which a lot of renin is secreted renin converts a lot of angiotensinogen into angiotensin angiotensin not only causes vasoconstriction but it also causes retention of salt and water which basically raises the arterial pressure it keeps on increasing the arterial pressure in this part so that it pushes so much blood that the blood flow the blood flow the blood supply to the kidneys return to the normal and the 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 renin secretion from the kidneys also return to the normal so that's all about the uh, coarctation of the aorta thanks a lot for watching the video